Shalom, it's Tehillah from the Kifar, and in this video, I am going to share with you some tips for using Zoom to help with your teaching and overall virtual classroom management. So I started teaching Hebrew online in 2015, and I've been using Zoom for the last three or four years. Um, I really like it. I use it with students of all ages, from preschool all the way up to adults. And so you can vary the, the settings and the options that you choose depending on what works for your classes. So this was initially recorded as one video, but it ended up being much longer than I expected it to be, so I cut it down into three parts. Um, this is part one, and we're going to cover uh, the first three tips in this video, and then you can continue on to part two to get the next set of tips, okay? So my first tip makes use of the share feature that is available on Zoom. And what I like to do 15 to 20 minutes before a new class begins is I will open up the Zoom room, but I'll turn my video and my microphone off. But I'll share a document that I have already prepared and saved on my drive that welcomes students to the class, lets them know the exact start time. And then also, if it's a very large group, I may ask them to turn their microphones off or I may ask them to navigate to a particular link and have that already pulled up. And I think that's helpful for a couple of reasons. One, particularly for new classes or for people who are new to Zoom, it lets them know that they are in the right place. You know, if they get on, sometimes students will get on five minutes in advance and they start panicking because the class hasn't started yet or because the instructor is not there. So it's just reassuring and lets them know the class is going to start at this particular time. It gives them a couple of minutes to gather anything that they may need to get. And it also takes the pressure off the teacher to need to be there, you know, 10 minutes early or five minutes early, because sometimes we really need those few moments before class begins, either to finish gathering our own materials or gathering our thoughts or just to take a breather, whatever it is. So it helps to bridge the gap between the time that a student may log into the classroom and the time that the class actually begins. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here is what the Zoom meeting looks like before I have turned my video on. And I'm going to click this share button right here in the middle. And once you do that, I can then select either a whiteboard if I want to type something up on the spot, or if I have um, a document already ready. Like I said, I prepare this in advance and I have it on the drive. I'll have the document opened up and then I can just select the document from the share. If not, or if this is just a one-time class and you want to do it, you can just hit the whiteboard and then select share. And once you do that, you will have a set of tools and you can click on the text box, okay? And then you can also select whatever font size or the, the line width, font color, all of that you can change here under the format option. And then you can simply just write a message to your students. So here's just a sample. Um, obviously you can adjust yours based on your class needs. So hello and welcome to Spanish 101, Hebrew, whatever it is, uh, the time that the class will start, and then any other instructions that you want the student to have. And of course, sign off with your name so that they know for sure that they are in the right place if this is um, the first time that you're meeting. And so you can share something like this, a document or something that you just write on the whiteboard before any class. It doesn't just have to be for the first class. If there are different messages that you want to give to students before different classes, then you can also do this. And again, I'll usually share it 15 minutes before class. My video will be off. My microphone will be off. I can continue doing what I need to do, but this will be available to students as they come into the Zoom room. And now once the class actually begins, I can just hit the stop share button and that will stop sharing and then start my video. For this video, I just, I put a post-it in front of the camera so it wouldn't be weird with my face in the video and then also in the screenshot. But obviously you would just have your actual video on. Once you begin, you'll notice that there is a large screen at the bottom and then there are smaller screens at the top for each of your students. And whoever happens to be talking, their face or whatever they have in their video will show up down here in the larger screen. That might be fine for you if that's what you want. If, however, you are sharing a picture or sharing a video or sharing something that it's important for all of the students to be able to see at all times without it flip-flopping back and forth between whoever is talking at the moment, what you'll want to do is pin the video or pin your screen as the host, as the teacher. And the way that you do that is by hovering over your screen, your video screen, 
screen, you'll click those three dots on the side and scroll down to pin video. And once you pin video, that means that whatever is showing on your screen, whether it's just you, you're showing your face or whether you are sharing a document, a video, whatever it is, that will remain pinned down here in the larger video. And even if other students are talking or if you're talking, it doesn't switch back and forth. Okay, so this might be something, again, that you are interested in if you don't want the large video to be whoever is speaking. Another thing to know, if students are logging in from all different types of devices, sometimes instead of having their names appear on the video, you might see like iPhone 7 or a random series of numbers. And there is a way for you to change that so that you know exactly who it is that you are addressing who's in your class. And so you'll hover over the video, just like we did to pin the video, and you'll click those three dots at the top, and then you'll scroll down to rename. Okay, and once you click rename, it will give you the option to rename. So test student will pop up and you can change test student and save and then their name will automatically change up here. Okay, so that's another good thing to know, particularly when you have students signing in from all sorts of devices and sometimes the device name will pop up instead of the student's name. So that's it for this video. Um, thank you for watching. Toda la tzfia in Hebrew. If you have questions about these tips, let me know. Definitely check out parts two and three for uh, the continuation of this video. And if there are other topics in virtual language teaching or resources that you would like to explore that you want me to do a video on, let me know. Okay? So until next time, lehita out. Bye.